it's time for Reflections with Pastor Drayton. Hi and welcome once again. This is Reflections, a 15-minute broadcast that's designed to bless you, inspire, and encourage you to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. Whether you are living for Him already or maybe you once did live for Him but now you're back sitting well, Today's message and this broadcast in general is designed to help you to either restore your walk with the Lord or improve your walk with the Lord or begin a walk with the Lord if you have none at all. Because what we're doing is lifting up Jesus Christ and encouraging you to live for Him. It's not about a church. It's not about a pastor. It is about a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And today I want to go down the road for... Um, some thoughts and reflections on divine intimacy. That is the title of today's devotional. So some time ago, quite a while ago, I, I contacted my three of my siblings. I have four siblings. Three of them are saved. And I contacted the, the, the three who were saved. And I said, look, I want to pray for you. Just give me what you would consider to be your most important prayer request and I will begin to pray for you along those lines and certainly all three of them did and uh, one of them shared that he wanted to have uh, intimacy and fellowship or restored renewed reinvigorated intimacy and fellowship with the Lord and I can very well and very easily relate to that request and I, I've been I've been praying for all of them uh, for several, many months now I've been praying for these requests. And the, the one who is not a Christian, well, my, my prayer request for him is very, very simple. I'm asking the Lord to save his soul. So today, I, 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 I share that with you, but also let me, let me share this with you. Some time ago, a couple of weeks ago, I was speaking with a sister in the Lord, a leader in the church, and she said to me, you know, I, I, I thought I was doing well with my devotions and my prayer time and so on. And then God spoke to me and said, I need you to spend more time with me. Now, I was so pleased when I heard that because that is, that is what is in my own spirit. The truth is I spend more time praying now than I think I ever have in my entire Christian life. Uh, and I believe that this is not something that's unique to me. I believe it is something that God is calling for the body of Christ, for every individual Christian to literally spend more time. Of course, there are some Christians that are doing very well in this regard, but there are many who really could spend more time with the Lord and need to spend more time with the Lord for various reasons. I'm not going to get into a whole big uh, teaching on that this morning, but certainly to, to share with you that there is need for divine intimacy. I want to borrow from Paul, the Apostle Paul, who had a, an excellent relationship with his God, yet you could hear him in Philippians chapter 3. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, and I'll make some comments as I go along. Philippians 3 verse 10, where Paul says, my determined, remember this is the Amplified, so it won't sound quite like the King James, it is quite expanded. He said, well, my determined purpose. Uh, I could start right there and I could preach all 15 minutes on that. My determined purpose. In other words, uh, I, I love the word intentionality. It's a word I've been using a lot because I'm realizing that if you want to live for the Lord, there, there must be a strong intentionality, like a fish swimming upstream. The moment you stop swimming against the tide upstream, you begin to get washed away with the current. And, and so I believe that, that God's people need to be very intentional about living a Christian life, especially in these days, these last days, where there's so much against the child of God, against Christianity. We have to be very strong in our faith and our intentionality to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Apostle Paul said, listen, my intention, my determined purpose is that I may know Him. This was actually a verse I used as, as one of my verses in my yearbook at Bible College when I graduated. That was one of the verses that I used. That my intention is that I may know Him. But the Amplified 
broadens that in, in such a way that it, it is it's for me it, it speaks so much to to my heart not what where my heart is but where I think my heart ought to be there is a difference sometimes there's a, a vast difference between where your heart is and where your heart needs to be and Paul says as rendered in the Amplified Bible that I may know him that I may progressively become more deeply and intimately acquainted with him one it is progressive so it is growing it becomes more and more it becomes deeper and deeper it becomes more and more intense it becomes broader my understanding of him this is what paul is saying i want to become progressively you know adding to adding to growing making it better better quality uh, more deeply and intimately acquainted with him beloved th th there are a lot of things that christians uh, some time ago i did a series short short series on abundant living that's what it was abundant living and in that series as i was preparing and sharing it i realized that there's a lot of life that Jesus came to give us, to give his people, that we, uh, that we miss, that we, we don't come into. It's like an inheritance that's left for us and we never really claim it. Uh, instead, we, we focus, we struggle with the difficulties, the challenges, you know, the ups and downs, the, the valleys, you know, and, and and God said, look, uh, uh, I'm sending my son Jesus. And Jesus came to this earth and says, I am come that you might have life and life more abundantly. And I, I believe with all my heart, according to the word of God, that Christians are supposed to have an abundant life. It doesn't mean that we're supposed to be rich. It doesn't mean that we're supposed to have everything that we want. But we can have abundance in so many different ways. And I I pray that all of us will come into this abundance. And what I'm saying here is that I believe that one of the reasons, and probably the, the biggest reason, that we don't walk in the fullness of life that Jesus came to give us is simply because we are not intimately, adequately, uh, deeply enough involved with our God the the the, the sweets tend to flow uh, out of our relationship or I should say from our relationship with the Lord and, and I want to to challenge you to to become intimately acquainted with God I'm just trying to move my cell phone so it doesn't make any noise here in the broadcast listen uh, Paul says I want to be more deeply and intimately acquainted with him I believe that's what the Spirit of God is saying to many of us, not all, but many of us today, to become more deeply and intimately acquainted with God. Uh, there's another side of that that I'll just throw in here because I, I believe we spend too much time thinking about ourselves, our needs, what we want. And I believe that one of the critical reasons that we need to be more deeply and intimately acquainted with God is so that we can be used to meet other people's needs, to be a blessing to other people in, in, in many ways. But we, we, our lives become very narrow um, and in some ways very shallow because all we're concerned about is ourselves. Uh, I want this, I need that. And not that the things are not legitimate, they are. But we get, we get consumed with our needs. And uh, there are so many others around us who are having it very, very, very difficult. And God wants to use us to be a blessing to them. But let me move on. Paul says, I want to be more deeply acquainted with him, perceiving, that is, you know, catching a glimpse of, and recognizing and understanding the wonders of his person more strongly and more clearly. There, there are so many messages in this verse as it is put out by the Amplified Bible. I, I got Paul says I wanna I want to to be able to catch a glimpse of and, and, and recognize and understand 
understand. I think that's the key right there, that we understand when I talk about the attributes of God. It is art to have a, a knowledge of them, to perceive them, uh, and even to recognize that, yeah, this is God, but to have an understanding of the wonders of his person. Uh, just recently, it was it was revealed to me that that God is, you know how we say that God is true, God is just, God is love, God is um, righteous. You know, we, we talk about the different attributes of God. And, and even in my own presentation of them, I would present one, although I would admit that I did say that it's hard to understand one without the other because they all overlap. But I, I heard someone, this is in a book, sorry, that I was reading recently, and, and what he was presenting was that God is, yes, he is righteous, yes, he is true, yes, he is just, yes, he is faithful, but he is all of them at the same time. And, and that uh, kind of like Bob went off in my head and I said, whoa, you know, a lot of people misunderstand God because they, they look at him in sections. Right? He's this. Yes, he is that. Yes, he is the next. Yes, he is the third. But the reality, he is all at the same time. That's why you can um, be deceived into thinking, for example, that a God of love can never send anyone to hell. But he is as much and at one moment the God of love as he is as much and at one given moment, a God of justice, a God of truth, a God who is holy. He is all those at the same time. And so when you consider one aspect of his character, one aspect of his person, you have to consider it in the context of all the other aspects of his person. And so in so doing, then you begin to, to understand other things that go on, that, that happen, that take place, because you realize that while it does not seem consistent with the character of God, of a God of love, to send people to an eternal hell, and I agree with that 100%, it is not consistent. But it is consistent with a God of love and a God of justice who, who is both all at the same time. I remember this is a very probably a very poor reference to give but um i grew up in a home where there was a lot of comedy my parents my my siblings the same siblings i talked about earlier there was all there they were always making jokes um and so i grew up with a sense of humor nothing wrong with that but i also i'm a very serious person especially when it comes to the things of god and sometimes, I remember when I was at Bible school, one, one friend of mine, a lady friend of mine says, but I don't understand you. How can you be so serious at one minute and then so comical the next minute? But I am both at the same time. I am not one point crazy and the next point serious. I am crazy and I am serious at the same time. That is who I am. And our God is a lot of things. But we try to separate them out and say, okay, God is this and God, you can't do that. So Paul is saying here, I want to understand the wonders of his person. His personality, his characteristics, his who he is more strongly and more clearly. And, and when you think about God being, I remember there was one aspect when I talked about God being blindingly pure. When we talked about, I believe it was His holiness, that God is blindingly pure. And so anything that's defiled cannot stand in His presence. And, and when you, when you, you take it all together, um, Paul is saying here, look, my desire is that I, I get to know my God intimately deeply and I, I want to to understand the whole wonder of his person not just one aspect 
but as much as I can, as much as my finite being can handle, I want to understand the fullness of who God is. I'll continue with this next week, but just enough for, to say for today, I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you to seek hard after, to go uh, intentionally after divine intimacy with your God. I believe that many vistas, many doors will open for you uh, in terms of God's will, plan and purpose for your life as you become more intimately and deeply acquainted with Him. I will see you next week, Wednesday, very early in the morning. God bless you. Have a great day.